I think the one thing that stands out with you and with me and our colleague Hida uh, with regard to dialogue is that it is, in your words earlier, so much more than a conversation. Welcome to Dialogue Creates, more than talk, where we explore issues and solutions together through the lens of dialogue. Thank you for joining. Your hosts, Susan Taylor and Leon Jaworski. Hi, Susan. Thank you for having me back. Hey, Leon. It's so great to be with you, as always. Likewise. And welcome, everybody, back to the More Than Talk podcast. I'm with uh, Susan Taylor here, and my name is Leon Jaworski. We're with Dialogue Creates. And today, we wanted to touch on how this whole thing of dialogue works, what it means. I feel like I've always been a decent communicator in my life, but I learned so much coming into dialogue and learning from you, Susan, through some of the courses I've participated in. And I've really found that while I thought I was open in conversation, dialogue is so much more than a conversation. And I would love for us to be able to share with our audience how we can describe dialogue to someone who may not be familiar with it. I love that, Leon. And it's so great to be with you again. And as we talk about this for the next 25 or 30 minutes, it's interesting because people will get something out of the words that we're using and maybe some of the, you know, emotions we're sharing as as well as the different um, interaction between the two of us. And at the same time, One of the things that I think is so beautiful and sometimes challenging (laughs) about this uh, concept, if you will, this practice that we call dialogue, is that it's extremely experiential, extremely experiential. And so until you've had the experience of it, oftentimes people kind of form their own opinion um, about what it really is. And so I really am very excited to spend this time with you today to try to not only talk about dialogue from our own experiences, um, but maybe give some uh, tips or tools or techniques that we might consider as we try to be dialogue. And I, and I want to be specific there. Um, if you Google Bohemian dialogue, you're going to find a lot of different you know, things out there from David Bohm himself, from different practitioners who are teaching this, who are facilitating this. And I think the one thing that stands out with you and with me and our colleague Hida uh, with regard to dialogue is that it is, in your words earlier, so much more than a conversation. Underpinned by principles. It's actually a deeper understanding of ourselves and our own interior condition or inner state and how we are being with each other in communication as we're in conversation. So we like to think about dialogue as a state of being or a way of being, a conscious opportunity to interact with people in certain ways. Yes, underpinned by some principles that Bohm discovered as as he was uh, creating this thing we call dialogue with a capital D. And more importantly, I think linked to the purpose of why David Bohm thought something was necessary, that he chose to uh, distinguish it with that capital D. And that is this idea of communication. So when I say that word communication, like what comes up for you? What, what do you think about when you think about communication? Well, for me, communication is a connection with someone. And I really like what you said about understanding more of ourselves 
in dialogue. I think for me, that was something that maybe wasn't as obvious when I was learning about dialogue through David Bohm's philosophy and through your teachings. And I think that's a really valuable element to recognize. If I tie it into any kind of relationship, personal relationship, an intimate partnership, a business relationship, if we're not in touch with ourselves, often it's much more difficult for us to be in touch with someone else, to put ourselves in someone else's shoes, for example. And I think that was one of the really profound learning experiences for me is thinking I was open, but really not paying attention to my interior condition. And I feel like that is something that really helped me to begin to understand how to engage in dialogue and take it on as a way of being. And really understanding myself and how I'm participating with myself and with another or several others. And how does that influence the way that this dialogue unfolds? I love that. One of the words that you use, which really perked my ears anyway, was engage. Engage. And uh, how that, for me anyway, links to connection, which was one of the first words that you just shared. And as part of that, like even today, still, if you look at the Gallup polls, when we think of business, employee engagement is still something that continues to be underserviced. The majority of people, well more than 50%, do not feel engaged at work. And I would like to um, consider maybe a little bit more, maybe even a little bit more, right? Because of what we've just been through over the last three years, right? With the pandemic and the lockdowns and the shutdowns and the hybrid and the remote and the this and the that. And so how, how are we intentionally making connection? How are we consciously engaging with one another in ways that build connection and not just to make transaction? Because when I think of business and um, I looked up the word transaction actually before you and I came together here because um, something happened the other day in our dialogue course where I just kind of had this aha moment where I was sharing with the group the importance of just being more conscious of asking myself a simple question, really. Am I, am I building connection with you or am I making transactions? And the word or doesn't mean to distinguish those two things as an either or. Both are necessary, right, in, in different parts of our lives and different aspects of our lives. And at the same time, when I think about business in particular, it's really a series of singular actions or transactions, right? So what could it be like if we could more intentionally engage in ways where we are connecting through relationship before making the transaction, as one example, or we're connecting in ways where people feel valued, seen, heard, understood, which is one of the key principles of dialogue, right? This idea that we want to really, with genuine curiosity, try to understand other before just projecting or transacting <laughs> my own thoughts and ideas onto you. So I think we're onto something here that feels, at least to me, you know, very exciting, very exciting. I agree. And I really like the focus on intention. I think it's all too easy to focus on the transaction. And if we have intention to listen, to fully understand, rather than to listen in order to achieve our agenda through rebuttal, to what someone is saying. 
I think having an intention of genuine understanding allows us to not only connect on a deeper level, but therefore participate with each other in order to make a decision that's mutually beneficial. Mm. In my opinion, some of the best business transactions are ones that really help to support the goal of either party. That's why someone would choose to say yes or no to a transaction. And if someone feels like they're not being heard, if someone feels like they're not being understood, if someone feels like this is not a good transaction, then they're less likely to engage in that connection. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. For me, it comes with the idea that connection is reciprocal. It, it creates more of a we, whereas maybe a transaction or being more transactional is more me oriented. And again, both, both are needed at, at different times for different things. Um, and yet linking this back then to the connection of the intention that underpins our time together, right? During, during this podcast. And, you know, some of the challenges I think that really exist with regard to how we talk about dialogue and maybe even folks listening, you know, to this episode, still not understanding uh, this connection that we're trying to make with regard to, you know, what is dialogue and why is it so important? So what are some things that have come up for you? I mean, you've known our work for a very long time and uh, you've more uh, recently been helping Hida and me to co-facilitate our dialogue courses through those different experiences and, and maybe even sharing briefly um, other experiences where you've brought this idea of being dialogue into interactions or groups even, what's unfolded for you with regard to how you might want to share in a way that people might just get a little glimpse of that experience to more fully understand what we mean by being dialogue? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, that powerful question. I feel that one of the most important elements that I've witnessed is this element of vulnerability in a safe environment. And what that environment is obviously will change from situation to situation. However, even as we experience in the virtual environment, it is possible to create what we've often called a container where all of the participants feel that they can be vulnerable as they're ready to be. And I think having that level of vulnerability is again, a bit of an inward looking element. And when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable with ourselves, we are then able to be vulnerable with each other and something that just came up for me in that is if I'm vulnerable with myself, that means I have to be honest with myself. And sometimes that is way more difficult than being honest with someone else. Absolutely. And so I feel that creating this environment where we can not only be honest with our other cohorts in that environment, but truly honest with ourselves allows for trust to be built. And when you have trust, I feel that the lines of communication broaden mm -hmm. and really set the field, as we call it, for deeper and true dialogue. And in bringing that to people who haven't experienced it through these certain philosophies, I've had some really profound experiences. For example, earlier this year, I was able to host uh, some dialogue engagements through a, an event that I was co-creating with some friends. And bringing folks who had never met each other together, I had never met, into this idea and creating 
that container can feel somewhat intimidating or a little challenging. And I think what I've experienced is, first of all, allowing people to know, giving people the knowledge, I should say, that all perceptions are valid. That's something that I always hear in the back of my mind that you taught me. (laughs) And I don't have to agree with another perception. But if I can accept that someone else's perception is truly their own, even if it doesn't align with mine, then I can be more open to seeing their viewpoint. And I think that's a a really powerful way to help people initially, and perhaps even immediately, start to open up if they're ready and, and able to. Yeah, so I love this idea, all perspectives, all perceptions are valid. And as part of that, easier said than done, right? I mean, (laughs) let's face it, we're in the day to day. Sometimes we're in the heat of the moment and there are, you know, diametrically opposed views at the boardroom table. Um, And at the same time, one little uh, trick, if you will, that I've kind of taught myself around this idea about all perceptions being valid is to just ask myself a question. So let's say, Leon, that you raise something with me that is completely counter to an idea I've just shared, right? So if if I can catch myself, if I can catch myself in those healthier moments, I ask myself a very quick question. What if just 10% of what you shared could be also true for me? Just 10%. And I think at least that opens the door to maybe coming um, into the conversation and connecting with you in a way that would come with some more genuine curiosity, right? And as part of that, I think um, it also requires us to come into any interaction in a way that I don't know the answer and I don't have to know the answer. And that's really challenging, I think, in business in particular, where a lot of us are paid to know the answer. And so I'm linking to something you said earlier, with regard to participating with and how could I help myself to understand the the deeper value, if you will, of what it means to participate with that in my unknowing and in my vulnerability, again, especially perhaps in business where I don't have the answer, if I could just participate with you in a way where that conversation we have could generate answers that I couldn't come up with on my own. I mean, can you imagine how that could contribute to innovation in business, how that could contribute to a growth platform, how that could continue uh, contribute toward, you know, deeper engagement, connection, all these things that we were just talking about. And so I'm going to link this to a quote that I think we've probably mentioned at least a hundred times this year alone. <laughs> <laughs> From our former business partner, Bill O'Brien, who was the uh, CEO of Hanover Insurance and uh, a partner of Generon International for many, many years. And it's a quite famous quote, if you will. I mean, it's very well known for for many people who are in this, uh, this domain. And the quote is this, the success of any intervention is dependent upon the interior condition of the intervenor. And I love that quote because it gets to what I think we're really talking about here. And it's whether I can describe it to you or not, it's the experience of participating with you that I think distinguishes dialogue with a capital D and dialogue. And I really believe with my whole heart that that was something that David Bohm was after with regard to how we communicate with one another. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of what is happening, transactionally or not, it's just my humble belief that how we treat each other truly matters. And I think dialogue gives us an opportunity for self-discovery, self-reflection, exploring, examining more deeply my inner state, how I show up, how I communicate, how I participate with you in a way that makes you want to be with me, right? So how we treat each other matters. And 
I think for me, we're coming full circle as, as we start to close the conversation in the next few minutes, but I've just kind of riffed here a little bit. What's, what's bubbling up for you, Leon? For me, as I was listening to what you're sharing with our audience today, it, it really helps me to remember my initial experiences in dialogue and thinking about that interior condition of the intervener and thinking about how we participate with each other. It reminded me that often we have a a choice to be open or to be closed off. I think often we generate a habit of self-protection and building walls, if you will. And Mm -hmm. yet we do have a choice to allow ourselves to truly listen to understand and to have a willingness to learn. And as you touched on a moment ago, thinking about what could be possible if we all participated with each other and held a similar goal in that regard, perhaps a similar mindset, it, it is very powerful. And I think this willingness to learn is key to that. I have a lot of experience as a, as a teacher and professor in a classroom based around music. And so for me, that was a parallel as I was listening to you talking about what could be possible in business. The reason I draw this parallel is often as a teacher, you're expected to be an expert. You really should be an expert in what you're wanting to teach. However, I find that having a willingness to learn allows for participation with. And so there are so many times where I would have had a student ask me a question or ask me how to achieve a goal that I had never considered. I had never thought of. I had never, it just never came to my mind. And I feel that having an openness and a willingness to learn from that really gave me an opportunity to discover with, to participate with that individual or that class so that it's a mutual discovery and therefore we're both aligning. And I think that really ties in with that parallel to business in order for us to really achieve more that more of the things that we want and and more of what a company's goal might be let's participate with each other and really have this mindset of of a willingness to learn and therefore not only do we grow as people but we can grow our businesses too percent one thousand percent, and um, I couldn't help but uh, reflect back on one of the podcast episodes you and I did together with regard to music, and how we talked about similar to love, music as a universal language. And when I started thinking about that as I was listening to you, it just reminds me, right, of David Bohm and him as a quantum physicist and what he discovered with regard to interconnectedness, right? So regardless of what you all believe, those of you who are listening to us, this is the question that I want to leave us with, because I think it's really important um, just based on what we shared here in, in the last 30 minutes. Whether you believe in interconnectedness or not, whether you believe that we are mirrors for each other all the time and how we interact with one another. If you could just take 10% of what I'm sharing about interconnectedness and being mirrors and believe it to be true, if we are truly, in other words, if we are truly mirrors for each other, shouldn't we be lifting everyone up instead of tearing each other down? And that reminds me of something that came up in, again, one of our dialogue courses where I think we tend to look at things with awe 
like the birth of a child or an amazing uh, scenery with, with vast mountains or the horizon, you know, the ocean. What if we could look at each other as, as, as people, as human beings with that same awe? And could that then help us to lift everyone up? So that's just something I'm holding as we conclude our time together. It's been amazing to be with you as always. And I want to thank you for hanging out with me for a while today. Um, I want to say hi to Hitta, our other colleague, <laughs> who also hangs out with us from time to time. And um, thank you all who are listening to this episode. And we truly look forward to being with you again. Dialogue creates more than talk. Thanks, Susan. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Leanne. I want to encourage you all, by the way, to leave a comment for us. Engage with us. Participate with us. If you have thoughts around any of this dialogue or other episodes, if you're watching YouTube, if you're listening on other platforms, please, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think. Perfect. Thanks for that awesome reminder, Leon. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care.